All right, here we are on Windows Vista. And for today's challenge, we're going to be trying to get Discord to run natively within Windows Vista. So let's open up Supermium, which is the browser of choice for today's video. And I got to say, Vista looks really, really good with this aero glass effect going over the, the objects behind it. It just, it looks so nice. But let's get right into it. So we're going to search up Discord on Google. I'm going to go to the discord.gg website and download for Windows. This will give us an executable right up here, which is going to be done in just a moment. And here we are. We've got ourselves a Discord setup executable. Let's see what happens. It turns out nothing actually happens. And I think an extended kernel again is a good first step. So let's try having a look for that. Windows Vista extended kernel. This is Windows Vista Home Premium and it should be a 64-bit version as well. All right, now our search has brought us to this Windows Vista extended kernel homepage from win32subsystem.live. Note the extended kernel is no longer receiving updates as such some applications may not work. Well, let's hope they do. So we can download this and we're going to go to the main download and it says to download all the prerequisite updates here before installing. So let's do that. Okay, we're going to download this and this. Cool. All right, let's get started with that. So the first one we're going to do is the one ending in 0C. So click this and we've got a user account control prompt. Click continue. Yeah, Vista was a bit touchy with permissions. So we're going to install this and that's installed. We're going to click close. Next, we're going to install the one that ends in 07. Click OK to install the following Windows software update. OK. All right. And now we're going to restart. This screen looks somewhat familiar if you're used to the Windows 7 update experience. It's, it's basically the same thing, though it's taking a long time to shut down. Jeez, come on. Configuring updates, stage three of three. Do not turn off your computer. The next thing is to install the actual Vista extended kernel. Unfortunately, this is a seven zip file, but that's easy enough to get around. We just go type in seven zip, click download, and then give me an exe. Yep, looks like it's 64 bit compatible. So now we can right click, go seven zip, extract to a folder, and we can get rid of this. Bring this down here is our kernel. And I have no idea what to do with this. Does it go in system 32? I, I should have read the instructions. Hey, there's a setup.exe. Let's try that. Insufficient permissions. Okay. Okay. Let me just right click, run as administrator, allow. There we go. All right. It says this is extended kernel update 2023 release revision two. press R for restore, press all other keys for setup. G. Setup is complete. Press any key to continue. And I guess let's get rid of the folder and run Discord setup again. Uh, no difference. Is it is it starting a process? Oh, Supermium is not even opening now. That's that's a surprise. Uh, how have we broken that? Run it in Windows XP mode. Nope, that doesn't even work. Uh, let's just get rid of that and maybe we can reboot again and see if that helps. Okay, we're back in. Now give me Supermium. All right, Supermium is back. Oh, nope. No, it's not. It's gone again. Let's, let's try another time. It has stopped working. Windows can check online for a solution to the problem. What are the details of the problem? App crash. Stack hash failed. Check online. Come on, Windows. We're all counting on you. We need a solution to this problem immediately. All right. Well, while Windows checks really hard, let's just uh, close the program a few times. And then, oh, it, it's really trying to keep opening. Okay. To help protect your computer, data execution prevention has closed Supermium. Click to learn more. Oh my God, there's so much stuff opening. Calm down. Stop. Stop Supermium. Calm down. Just, just, uh, okay. Okay. Oh my God. Do you want to get the latest online content when you search? Help? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, data execution prevention is a security feature that can help prevent damage to your computer from viruses and other security threats. It monitors programs and it makes sure they use memory safely. And if they don't, then oh God help you. Uh, let's ask someone. Get customer support. Post the question in the Windows community. Contact Microsoft customer support. If I click this, is everything going to break? Yes. Everything is broken. Let me let me go back to my recycle bin and let's restore this, this folder that we used to install the kernel. All right. Now, does this being here make things work? Like if I run this again, is it going to help? No, 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 absolutely not. Let's do a restore then. Press R for restore. Provide the path of the Windows directory that you want to restore. Uh, C Windows System 32. Uh, well, that didn't work. Unable to restore C Windows System 32 Syswell 64 shell 60.dll.back to C Windows. Huh, right. Okay. Um, 
Let me consult the instructions again. Well, on my main computer, I have found another installation guide using method two. You can use Ubuntu to install the extended kernel. Before I do that, I just want to see how broken this actually is because maybe I'm just overreacting. Does Inkball work? Okay, Inkball does work, guys. We are not completely screwed. What about Windows Media Center? Okay, I mean, we have Windows Media Center. What could possibly be wrong with this computer then? Should I reinstall Supermium? Well, oh, here we go. Cleaning of target directory failed. Supermium is likely running or a file permission issue is occurring. Reinstall. Successfully completed. All right, let's open it. It has stopped working. Well, let's go back to this setup file that we ran so boldly. I'm gonna click R, restore. We're gonna do C, Windows, complete, I guess. Uh, let's reboot again. All right, I swear none of these kernel projects ever work the way they're supposed to. Like they, they all have super simple instructions. You just click install and then you can run all these applications that, that definitely work. Okay, so if we go back to this extended kernel page, it says that you're allowed to use up to Firefox 115, OBS and Chrome, Chromium 111. So if we grab Firefox 115 here, maybe we can install that Firefox setup. Sorry, Firefox can't be installed. The version of Firefox requires Windows 7, 64 or newer. Why, why do you need Windows 7? Who says you need Windows 7? Okay, perhaps the MSI would work better? No, okay, fine. Give me additional information. Oh God, not Internet Explorer. Jesus. What are you even trying to load? If you just fill in the address bar, Internet Explorer, I could go to this page right now. Oh, here we go. Oh, it actually worked. Okay, this is just the recommended. Yeah, I, I don't care. All right, crazy thought. Maybe I'm supposed to be installing this from safe mode. Let's reboot into safe mode, which I think is F7 or maybe F8. I don't know. I'm going to press both. Safe mode with networking. Let's go. All right, here we are. We're in safe mode and Vista does not look very pretty in, in the Windows Classic theme, I will say. Now, we're going to run the kernel file again. And what is this version of Explorer? This is this is crazy basic. Wow. OK, um, let's run setup.exe. Run. Press G. Setup is complete. OK, well, in theory, it should be working. Um, what is it asking me to eject? Oh, everything. Literally everything. OK, cool. Let's reboot again. Ugh. All right, we're back. Maybe we can run Firefox now. Let's see. Come on. You can do it. No, you can't do it. I have an idea. I could try that that tool I ran in the Windows 2000 video. Let me find it. All right, here we go. Let's extract this folder. I don't know the password. Um, You know what? This is fine. I don't need the password because I can just go to Windows 2000 where I at some point had the password and already extracted the folder and grab it right back out. Oh, we're, we're here. This is what I want, I think. KDW097BX. Now let's run fcwin2k.exe, minimize this, and we're gonna do a similar thing we did in the Win2000 video. So we're gonna run firefox.exe up here. We're gonna do OS version emulation at Windows 8 or 7. Seven's fine, I think. And then run compat. Uh, it needs Windows 7 64-bit or newer. All right, well, I found an ISO which has a Russian title, but it, it claims to include the extended kernel already installed. So because my version of Windows Vista doesn't like this setup for extended kernel, and it seems to not like installing Firefox, no matter how I try and force it, I'm just going to reinstall Windows Vista and I'm going to use that ISO and we're going to work from there. Okay, cool. Um, I've got the ISO mounted and I started it and this is not the Windows Vista startup screen. This is the Windows 7 startup screen. So I think I'm going to be quite surprised to see that it's Windows Vista underneath. Never mind. Take back what I said. Product key. Yes, yes, the product key. Give me one moment. We're going to install to unallocated. That should be all I need to really touch. It's just going to go ahead and install Windows. Please wait while Windows sets up your computer. All right, so we should now be on a 64-bit extended kernel release of Windows Vista. Let me just paste over the Firefox setup again. Whoa, it did not like the VMware tools installation. There is one result for this, this, this file and it's not in English. Man, you can be led on some really weird rabbit holes when you try and do this stuff. 
Um, okay. Well, it did boot just fine until it had VMware tools installed. Let's just see if restarting it is enough to make it boot normally. Do we need to try safe mode? I don't know. Let's just try normal. Oh, oh, it's just totally fine now. Right. Well, here's our Firefox setup. Let's try it. That's a no. It, it doesn't run even on the ISO that has the baked in extended kernel. Service pack two with extended kernel. Well, maybe it's just Firefox sucking at, at having an installer that works on old versions of Windows. Maybe we can just install Discord manually now. Oh my God, what are you even wanting to do? No restarts. I'm not going to break anything else. All right, Discord set up. Let's run it. Installation has failed. There was an error while installing the application. Let's open the log. What have we got going on here? Okay, couldn't run Skrill hook. Configuring this. Okay, specified executable is not a valid application for this OS platform. Couldn't install system component model. Okay, from my rough understanding here, it's trying to launch sub processes that aren't compatible with Windows Vista. Now that's okay. Nothing works on Vista. Vista is, is the hardest one so far to do anything with. Oh, another blue screen. Microcode revision mismatch. All right, I've given up on internet browsers for the moment. We're just gonna try different Discord clients. Hopefully we get a bit closer with that. The first of which is gonna be Vencord. Now this I'm pretty sure is just built off the regular Discord installer and regular Discord client, but who knows, maybe it works different. Let's see. Nope, 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 nope. That was quick. All right, what else have we got? All right, next we've got something called leg cord. Let's try this. Okay, how about now? Damn it. All right, guys, last resort. I have found a really old copy of the Discord installer. We're going to go ahead and run it. It's going to ask for .NET, which is go. That's fine. Go ahead and do that. Installation has failed. Failed to install the .NET framework. Do it manually. Okay, we need to grab that first. Okay, .NET framework. Extracting. I read. Install. Please be able to download this. Please. Come on. Well, it looks like it's not going to download it. So here's the offline installer. Let's cancel this and try this one instead. Read this, install, it's much better. Installation is complete, finish. Uh, I don't want to restart. I'm just going to YOLO it. Okay, we should restart. Okay, it looks like it is actually doing stuff. So maybe it's going to work once we get back in. All right, here we are. Let's run it right away. Holy crap. We got checking for updates. We, we got update failed. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We can probably work around that. Let's just see if it does it on its own. No, it's just failing. Okay, well, let's move this to the side. I've found a potential way of bypassing this forced update. So let's have a look. Step one is to grab this zip called ASAR and follow the instructions. Now, this is a plugin for 7-zip. I'm going to copy in the 64-bit DLL and it will, it will work. Here we go. Okay, now we go to our user account, app data, local, discord, app, blah, 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 resources app.azar and we open that in 7-zip. Nope, we want to open it, not add to archive. Here we go. We're going to extract this. We're going to open with Notepad. We're going to turn on Word Wrap. You know what? This isn't actually very good to, to work on. We're going to do this in Notepad++. Notepad++. All right, let's try that again. We're going to open this in here. Uh, yeah, look, now we can read it. We need to find the function async function update, update till current. We're going to delete from here to here. Save it. Pop this back in the archive. Yes. And we're going to relaunch it. Discord. Nope, it doesn't. It, it still tries to update. This is a new Discord client called Abaddon. Let's launch this with the exe. Okay. The audio engine could not be initialized. Is that is that ignorable? Oh, wow. Okay. Discord login with QR code. All right. Okay. Okay. Give me a minute. All right. I found an account that I don't care about. I'm going to scan the QR code now, waiting for confirmation. And now I'm going to click login on my phone. Logging in. Oh my gosh, guys. We've got Discord on Windows Vista. Wow. Don't mind the servers that I'm actually in. Let's look at Chris Cord here. And wow, we can just go straight into general. These are people talking about phones. Uh, this is a image preview, it looks like. Can we view images in here? We go to the, oh, Supermium's coming up. Go away, Supermium. I think I clicked on a link. I think that's what happened. Let's look at memes. Okay, they don't quite, oh, no, they do work. Yeah, this really is the definitive experience. Can I join a VC? No, oh, join. Input settings, input microphone, output speakers. I'm in here. Am I actually talking though? Let's join on another machine. Okay, I'm on another machine. 
connected. Yeah, I'm not actually talking, which is probably because the audio engine failed to initialize. Something about the buffer size? Okay. I wonder if we could get that working as well. Well, there's no like configuration in here. Maybe it's it's all command line based or something. Either way, I'm calling this a win. This works really well. Let's um let's look in the Ubuntu Discord server. Can I post a screenshot of my Windows Vista experience? How do you take screenshots on Vista? Snipping tool, right? Yes, let's post this. Windows Vista is best OS. I'm going to get kicked for spam for sure. Oh my God, I keep accidentally opening Supermium, but because because it's my default browser. Let me just change that because Internet Explorer is the only thing that works. So I wonder if this will actually let me open stuff now. That's oh, connecting. Yeah, this isn't doing anything. I'm just going to leave that alone. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to mark this video as a success. I mean, we didn't get the native Discord client working, but we got a version of Discord and it wasn't through like a browser cheat kind of way. It was through like an actual real client. And even though we can't talk to anyone because the audio is broken, this might just be a VM issue, who knows? We can still send messages. We can look at pictures. We can interact with people. And that's what Discord's about. So thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or want more content like this. You can check out my Discord in the video description or you can follow me on Twitch as well. That's all from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Fearless.